No, no, no. This is. I no. must comment that. No. 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 I will be reading this prepared statement to make sure I do not leave anything out or make any further mistakes. This is with regards to the last video we uploaded where I made CC upset. Mike will uh, link the uh, video below in case you haven't watched it. That video was the most, most difficult one that we've ever made and also the most controversial judging by the comments in the descriptions. Against the opinions of staff, I decided to go ahead and post it. I promise you that we would be transparent and honest. I hope that you will see that I'm living up to that promise. I had not slept much for that week, perhaps a total of 25 hours. Not that that was an excuse. I was grumpy, tired, and ready to start a fight with anyone. It began when one of the microphones didn't work. <laughs> Even Alex is all screwed up now. Well, I didn't get to check this, 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 this. Shame on you. <laughs> test, 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 test. We're not going to uh, spend the time to debug it now. Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. Hope you're doing well. Um, to my right is um, Louis, CC, and I'd like to introduce you to Mike. Mike is uh, uh, our new friend. He's been with us how long now? About a month? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Wow, time flies. So um, Mike has an interesting career. He had his own production company, video production company. He went to China for a number of years. How long, how long were you in China? Uh, less than 10 years. 10 years approximately. Uh, he has yellow fever. So <laughs> look at look at look at Lewis. Um, anyway, so he was there to do uh, a lot of video work. Why would you and, say that? <laughs> <laughs> commercial commercial work and so on. So anyway, uh, he's also a lifetime music lover and audiophile. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. And um, just before he joined us, he was doing sales in high-end professional audio and video uh, products. And a, a number of his clients were uh, movie production houses, right? So he knows a lot about this kind of stuff in the pro world. And I'm really glad for him to join us. So anyway, today, to the topic at hand, we're going to review the speakers behind us, the Martin Logan ESL uh, 11As. So for those of you who don't know, we just picked up Martin Logan about three weeks ago. Our last video was head-to-head -head comparing the Electromotion um, 100s, I can't remember the whole thing, uh, dynamic speakers and the ESL-X uh, hybrid speakers. Um, so if you haven't seen that, uh, click on the link below. The guys will put the link so you can watch it. So today we're doing the Big Brother. So um, Mike will probably do the video editing, so he'll throw up all the little specifications of the speakers. I'll just mention a few that would be of interest. The electrostatic panel is 11 inches wide by 44 inches high. So the way that Martin Logan names their products is the ESL 11 means that it's 11 inches, and then 13 is 13 inches, and 15 is 15 inches. Uses two 8-inch woofers, each are powered by a 275 watt amplifier into 8 ohms and 550 watts peak. The speakers also have the Anthem Room Correction System built in just to correct for the bass, which the guys will talk about in the uh, review. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to do the actual review myself today. I'm just going to moderate these three guys. Um, so let's see what they have to say. Uh, Louis, you want to start? Okay. Um, so the um, 11A, um, as that designation, it's a fantastic um, piece. I love it. Um, Wait a minute! You didn't like the last one. You you didn't you went you didn't care for the uh, no, ESL no, no, X. No, 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 I do care for it. It's just that I thought the dynamic had such a great um, sound stage, depth, height, center image um, on the um, one hundred. The dynamic XT. speakers, yeah, the one hundred. So, but um, my thing is that these electrostatics play any type of music very very well and things are which are not that well recorded comes out very acceptable not fatiguing at all no I, matter what you throw at are, it are you talking about these ones it doesn't matter which okay, ones. okay all right but these are in particular has such a huge sound stage um 
And bass, wow. Um, Adrian had said that um, previously the um, the panel didn't keep up with the bass, or the, I'm sorry, the bass didn't keep up with the panel. The that early is models. not so now. Yeah, the early models. Yeah. The earlier models. This is not nowhere near like that. There is such a fantastic blend. It's unbelievable. We, we, we should talk about the electronics that we were using. So we used the Lumen P1 uh, as a, as a transport, yeah, a streamer. And then we have the Macintosh C12000 preamplifier and the Macintosh MC3500, which we haven't spent very much ta time talking about okay. before. But uh, so now we're using that to drive the panels of the ESL 11s and the woofer part of the speaker has his own amplifier. So we don't yeah. need to do it. OK, sorry about that. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Um, so, yeah. So no matter what you throw at these speakers, it sounds very good. I started off yesterday listening to it with in, in somewhat detail with um, this piano done by Yuruma, which is Japanese, and all she does, she just plays the piano. And the hardest thing to record is a piano, and it was so beautiful. Um, you could hear the, the Who's notes. Who's phone is that? CC? Sorry. Damn, CC, I told you, turn the, turn, okay, everybody turn your phones Shame, off. Shame, Sorry, turn, sorry, sorry. Louis, you have sorry. your phone on? Turn it off. No, no, I don't have my okay. phone here. My phone is off. All right, sorry about that, guys. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah, so it starts off with, the, you know, beautiful piano, um, like a recital recording, and uh, the center image, everything came out just perfect, perfect height on the sound stage. Awesome. Um, and also, this, the, her music is so relaxing. It's just so beautiful. The other track I played was a bass track, um, Engines of Creation. What the hell is that? Where'd you get that track from? <laughs> <laughs> Engines of Creation? Engines of Creation. That's the, uh, the group. And um, the lead guitar in this one here was just singing... Um, and the riff was just fantastic. The bass, oh my gosh, just, you know, voluminous um, and sharp, quick, really, really thorough. Um, and it comes through this, those twin eights speakers there in the sub, fantastic. Um, the other song I said, well, let me try and do vocals now. So I went on to play Gregory Porter, God Bless the Child, and it's just vocal, no instruments at all. And the baritone and his voice, the mid-range and everything comes, coming out of the speaker, just absolutely f fantastic. Um, the last song I played, um, was um, a Melody Gardo um, song, Love Me Like a River Does. Oh, so beautiful. Um, her voice is so romantic. The song is so beautiful. And the speakers just threw out everything, which was amazing. Um, we had other people in the room listening to that song track as well and they also commented how beautiful it sounded with the ESL um, 11A is here it's just great um, the, so my my wrap up uh, no I won't wrap up yet okay <laughs> we'll pass it on to CC all right CC what do you think okay sure uh, first thing first I was introduced to the ARC system and we tested it with the Billy Eilish bad guy Oh, oh, Billie Eilish? Yeah. I thought we stopped, uh, I banned that song. I mean, I'm not joking. I uh, why? Because ev everybody uh -oh. keeps playing that stupid, s I, I, okay, sorry it's about such that. A, it's such a <laughs> wonderful right, song. Ahead. It's great for a testing bass. So, and I find that the bass was blending very well. And Is that uh, with or without the arc? With the arc. Okay. I like it with the arc. So to me, it sounded more holographic, more 3D. and. 
I think to use a better word to describe it would be like I feel like each base that it produces is, has like a destination to go to. It has a home to to put it to a place where it made me sound, made me feel like it was a holographic sound. So in the last video, I was totally in love with the ESLX I mentioned, and I was because I was able to catch the Martin Logan magic and enjoying it 100%. So today we're talking about its big, big brother, the ESL 11. Again, I find that I experienced the Martin Logan ma magic a lot and bringing my experience even further and deeper. I really like the unique sound that uh, the Martin Logans produces. It's nothing like other speakers. So if you like the Martin Logan sounds, it will be like a drug to you. It's airy, it's open, it's organic. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to, sorry. We, we said no more of these words. Cut, cut these things out, guys. I'm sorry, I'm just not in a good mood today. No, why? Because the previous guy, oh. anyway. Well, well, like it sounded very natural, organic. Okay, so Lewis is getting flashback <laughs> because I used to I used to chastise uh, Philip all the time. Stop using that word, yeah. And instantly, when you listen to these speakers, you will feel the difference. You feel how it's free of box, free of coloration, and you it, it tricks your brain, making you feel like. You, the, the room doesn't exist. Like you're brought to somewhere very wild, very spacious. So um, let me tell how my listening experience was and my feelings when I was listening to these speakers. The two songs that I will share, one is Right Here Waiting by Richard Marks. So when the music begins, it was very magical and beautiful. So each high frequency sounded like it has this extra airiness around each note and then adding that sense of spacious feeling. And as I mentioned, I, it made me feel like I was brought to a, a very spacious place. When I was listening to here, uh, right here waiting, it made me feel like I was like brought to the ocean. I felt this breezy feeling wind blowing and um, the, and then it just gave me this feeling that I could visualize him like in a in the video or in the MV that he's singing by the ocean and the other song that I played was Liberty by Annette Asvik wait, wait. <laughs> that's, <Bro. laughs> that's guys Okay, you can cut this part up, but th that's the that's the song we have to stop playing. This is a horrible. That's the piece. first time I played this song. <laughs> horrible! You never play that song in my presence. It's a terrible song. It looks <laughs> like today I'm stepping on all of Adrian's. Just me. This is <laughs> bad me. Louis too. He always plays that stupid, horrible song. Anyway, <laughs> Alex, don't you ever play that song? Anyway, he played it yesterday. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay, so. Listening to this piece of recording allowed me to appreciate everything from this music. So the song, uh, the recording, the uh, the lyrics, and the singer, and especially like I have to thank the speakers allowing all of that to happen. So because of all of this incredible thing that the music was able to tell me. As we can tell from the title of the music, Liberty, it tells a story of how the singer was trying to tell a story of how they were broken down, their, their, their broken heart and broken dreams, and how they were painful in a sense of betrayal. So the lyric starts with, our bodies are hurting like hell. They promise to never leave us alone. So you, you could feel the deep, painful sense of betrayal, and they have lost freedoms and struggles with their broken promises, probably from, I assume, their government or someone who are supposed to protect them. And in the end, they, they were betrayed. And 
I, and with the ESL 11 speakers, I was able to hear every little detail. I was able to hear the inhaling, exhaling. I was able to hear the fading of the singer's voice. So all of that would add tremendous um, emotion evoke to my experience when listening to this music. So that's why I said I was very appreciating this music. And I was able to hear the broken hearts in the music, and especially in the strong lyrics, especially in, uh, in the end when the trumpet and piano burst strongly, it added to that tr uh, dramatic atmosphere. It is a music that Adrian would describe as inspired. <laughs> no, not in this case. <laughs> Maybe it's because we play it so much in the case. I'm so sick okay. of it. <laughs> so to wrap up my thoughts, I really like it. It's unique. Hold your conclusions. Hold your okay. conclusions. We're going to do right. conclusions. Okay, Mike, it's your turn, and I have to pass the mic over because we're short of mics. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hello, everyone. Um, so I was the one who performed the calibration. Um, it was fairly easy to do, although the documentation is kind of limited. Essentially, all you're doing is hooking up uh, one speaker to the other via an Ethernet cable, uh, one USB cable from the PC to a USB mic, and the other USB goes into the back of the speakers, and the software takes care of the rest. It was very, very easy to do, very, very quick. Um, while I was doing the calibration, unfortunately, Bad Guy by Billie Eilish was, was playing. So I did have a reference of a, a fairly bass heavy song that was playing already. So as soon as the calibration was done, um, I fired Billie Eilish back up, sat in the sweet spot, and immediately I was like, where's, where's the bass? The bass is gone. Um, and I was like, okay, let's let's listen to this in a critical way. So I turned off Billie Eilish, and I put on a song that I know Lewis loves and Adrian is starting to hate, which is um, the Zeppelin uh, cover "Cashmere", Cashmere. by Marson. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, it's getting very overplayed, but it is a very very good song to demo with because it's, it's very. Um, it's very bass heavy, but it has lots of sparkling highs. Um, I don't know if you guys know Marson, we've mentioned it before, but he plays acoustic guitar, um, but he also uses the body of the instrument in a very percussive way. He slaps his fingers and his hands on the, on the guitar, he whacks the strings. Um, so there's a lot of percussive and transient elements uh, in this song. So as I said, initially I thought, where's the bass? The bass is gone. Uh, after you put in the arc. After yeah. I put in the arc. Yeah. So, first thing I did is I listened to it without the room correction on, and I thought, this is the way it's supposed to sound. Turn the, sorry, tur listen to it with the room correction off. This is how it's supposed to sound. Turn the room correction on. And after listening to it for about 10, 20 seconds, I realized that the transients were coming through with much more articulation. There was a little bit more room for the transients and all the little percussive elements to, to really shine through. Uh, I noticed that the sound stage kind of opened up just a little, just a tad. Um, so I was actually, I was now starting to realize, oh, the room correction actually is doing a pretty good job. Even though I did think the bass was a little thin. Um, my second song was a, another cover um, originally done by Queen called Get Down Make Love and the cover was done by uh, Nine Inch Nails. Mm. Um, so if you guys are familiar with Nine Inch Nails, he puts on an oral story. He uses every sonic trick in the book. So in any of his songs, you might go from this wide, spacious soundstage to the most pinpoint mono you can think of. In fact, in the past, when I bought some of his CDs, they actually would say a real disclaimer on the CD that said, do not play in mono devices. 
because I assume he's playing with the phasing of the speakers and on a single driver, maybe the, the phasing of the speakers uh, would essentially cancel each other out and the, the driver would be trying to go in and out at the same time. Um, so this song is a very, um, it has a dr deep droning, low, high energy bass that goes throughout the whole song. And with the room correction off, um, the speakers obviously perform flawlessly. The bass didn't get in the way of anything. The sound stage was big and open when he wanted to be big and open, and it was minimal when he wanted to be minimal. Uh, the imaging went from, you know, being able to place the speakers to a single point when he wanted you to hear a single point. But after the room correction was turned on, it again, it opened up a little bit and you heard a little bit more grittiness in the analog synths. Like it, it just, it had a little bit more bite. And again, me coming from a pro audio background, I know that if there's a, an engineer who's mixing a song, they, they generally don't try to add a lot of frequencies. They'll take out another frequency that the lets that other frequency to, to open up and to breathe a little bit. So again, I, I enjoyed it with the room correction on, although I found it was missing a little bit of that bass that I wanted to hear, especially with a song like that. Just Sorry, let me just, yeah. just so I don't forget, parenthetically, on the back of these speakers, there is a <laughs> volume knob for the bass. So if after room correction, you decide you're missing a little bit more level, you can always increase it. And there's also a switch that allows you to um, either cut uh, neutral or increase by two decibels the mid bass as well. So you can, you can still um, tweak with it. Sorry. That's okay. So he's correct. Um, the last track, and actually I'm going to say tracks, uh, is from an album by uh, Joe Jackson, who came out in the very late 70s, around the, the post-punk era, the new wave era, and he had two hits, uh, Stepping Out, or maybe Stepping Out Tonight, and the other one was uh, Is She Really Going Out With Him? But for his third album, what he did, he's like, screw fame, screw what I've been doing before. He did a very authentic 1940s swing album. Okay. Um, so this is a decade and a half before, remember that mid 90s swing revival where there were a whole bunch of swing bands who came out. Um, so he, dis, uh, he did this a decade and a half before any of that came out. So it was a cover album of big band jazz standards from, uh, let me get this right, Cab Calloway, Louis Jordan, among others. Um, it's a fantastic album. You cannot listen to this album and be unhappy. If you listen to this album in the morning, you are going to have a good day. Uh, if you listen to it with your family, I guarantee within a week, everyone will be singing these songs. It is a very, very happy album. It is recorded in a 1980s way, but songs from the 40s. So it's recorded really hot. Um, it's really in your face. You can tell that they were close miking everything. So. It's, it's a very sparse recording. There's only, what, there's like an alto sax, a tenor sax, a trumpet, and a clarinet, bass, piano, uh, xylophone as well. So there's not a lot of instrumentation for a big band. A big band can have 20 different uh, uh, brass instruments, for example. So this album was recorded really hot. On a lot of systems, because it was recorded so hot, sometimes it can be a little fatiguing. Of course, the Martin Logans take care of that. It just makes everything buttery smooth, okay? With the room correction off, again, it's Martin Logan. These speakers sound great with anything you throw at it. So when I put the room correction on again, the, the sound stage opened up a little bit. Um, you could place the images a little bit better. His voice, which is already very prominent in the recording, got a little bit more separation. And although it's a very authentic performance recorded live off the floor, the only electric instrument was the bass. So they actually used an electric bass. Um, and it's hard to tell that it's an electric bass on a lot of systems. 
but with the room correction on, the the grittiness of the electric base shines through a little bit. So you can actually tell that it is an electric base. Um, now, that being said, I did something that I don't know if anyone else did, is what Adrian just mentioned. After I listened to these tracks, I went up and I turned up the bass level knob with the room correction on, and, and that's where the system really shun. So I was again, I was getting that visceral bass that I wanted, but because of the room correction, everything was, was a little bit more clear and defined, and the bass was a lot more even. Um, like usually when we play that Marson track in this room, even at moderate levels, it starts rattling the, the, the tiles, you know? It starts even rattling the walls because the walls here are kind of paper thin. Um, but with the room correction on, it yeah. was kind of tamed. Yeah. yeah, so it was more controlled, but it was still powerful, still had a lot of punch. Um, it's like punching it, your face instead of punching the ceiling. Yeah, exactly, which is fine because my face is <laughs> very good. Um, but with the room correction on, I was getting more definition and articulation in the sound. Just a little bit. It wasn't anything earth shattering. Um, sound stage opened up a little. Again, nothing earth shattering. But with the room correction on, that bass, when you adjusted the levels after the room correction had been done, done it was it was perfect. It was it's a beautiful, beautiful system with the room correction, yeah. Okay, so let's wrap up. Uh, sorry, uh, just because we're running long here. Uh, Lewis, why don't you give us your conclusions? So um, the thing is that when you use the room correction, I found is that the voluminous bass goes away, but it's more articulated. Um, so what happens? You don't. You're not missing anything from the mid range or the the top end of the the recording what happens is that you start concentrating mentally on the bass and you're not thinking of the other parts of the tracks. So, so what happens is that when you turn on the, the room correction, it cuts down the bass and then you start to hear things more and you start to say, oh, well, that's here. And you know, so the bass is not overpowering the sound with the room correction. And I think that's a very valuable tool to use because you're getting more. And I thought that it when you when we heard it without first, when you did it, and then you, we flipped the switch, then you start hearing things what you were not focused on because the bass was just a lot, voluminous. It was really powerful. And then you lost some of that. But, you, but things didn't open up more. It sounded like it opened up more, but it's because the concentration of the bass, you're concentrating on the bass because it's in your face. And then all of a sudden it goes away and it's more natural now. So did you prefer it with or without? I prefer it with and without. It's hard <laughs> because certain <laughs> tracks are light on the bass. <laughs> Certain tracks were light on the bass, but the Marson track for sure. When we when we played it with and without, I missed it at first, and then I'm going, but this sounds so much more even keel, you know. It's 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 so much. The response is so much nicer, you know. Instead of you know, in your face bass, right? You're no Jamaican, man. <laughs> <laughs> I am fully Jamaican. No, I'm, I'm Canadian now. <laughs> Mike, what did you think? Your conclusions? With the room correction on, with the bass adjusted, and, and I have to say that, with the bass adjusted to my taste, and it's not a lot, I'm not a bass freak. With the room correction on, no bass adjustment, as Lewis said, much more articulate because the bass frequencies that have been removed are giving room and breadth to the other frequencies but it was missing that visceral punch you're supposed to get in the face from bass so after correcting the bass level to my liking oh man it was it was perfect it was a beautiful system mm -hmm. how much did you how much did you add to the bass correction uh, to the bass level do you remember 
enough for it just to be <laughs> noticeable. Nothing, <laughs> nothing earth shattering. Again, there's I, I didn't look at the indentations. I kind of just went this much A and then this much on the other one, <laughs> and, and it was fine. Okay. Yeah, nothing too scientific. <laughs> okay, CC, what did you think? Okay, so um, I already said that I really like it with the arc. And to wrap up the overall performance of the performance of the speakers, I really like it because it's very different. It's unique and special. Uh, I, I I just put down here when I was listening. I totally understand why people are so loyal to Martin Logan speakers because of the sweet mm -hmm. magic that it produces, and I'm starting to understand that now. And actually, I was gonna mention that. Um, I also played another song through my listening experience. I want to point out it was a Chinese music called uh, by Eason Chan, which God. I... <laughs> Why? He's terrible. <laughs> why? Just anti Chinese? What do you think? Why? Why are? Why is the <laughs> fire? So, so, so many great songs I've been showing you and playing for you, and you play these horrible Chinese pop songs. <laughs> well, why can't you appreciate other music as well? I do. It's just that this this <laughs> this one in particular is just terrible. I'm sorry, guys. Really? It is. Yeah, I don't. It's like terrible it. track. No. No, it's not. Seriously? Yeah, yeah I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had better taste, to be honest. I do. Oh boy. Oh my god. <laughs> I think we need to Why why are they targeting me now? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I can't no, we're just picking on you too. No, no, no. This is this I, I, I just find that this is getting very bad throughout today's whole video. No, he's uh, he's been no. picking on me the whole no, time. No, no, no. Picking on everybody. Buddy. <laughs> no, no, no. It was just on me, like Billy Eilish, Liberty, <laughs> the word organic, and now I was just <laughs> mentioning this Chinese piece of music and then he started firing on me. But you know what? No, no, no. This is I no. must comment that No, 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 I'm done. <sighs> Go talk to her. Go talk to her. Wow. Take any kind of comments. <laughs> 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 you think we're that mean? You think we're that terrible? <laughs> Everybody, come, come around, come around. <laughs> Lewis, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> so face the camera. Come, Tristan. Come. So, I just didn't know what's uh, everybody, <laughs> what's going on? Just so oh, you know. Okay. Um, today is Cece and Tristan's last day, so her idea, not mine, was let's pull a prank on Lewis. You're not just doing it. So we decided, we decided oh to be mean to her and then see uh, what uh, Lewis's reaction was. So first of all, let me first of all say uh, I'm very grateful for both Tristan and uh, Cece's uh, uh, joining us this last term. They've been marvelous. They've been great. And as a matter of fact, Alec, Alex is holding the camera. And Alex was our previous uh, victim. So these three have been absolutely remarkable as co-op students. I'm very grateful for them to join us. I think uh, Lewis would agree, although now he's pretty pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> he may not agree now. <laughs> oh, um, so unfortunately, at least for the short term, uh, they're going to be going back to school uh, next term, but I'm sure they'll come back and join us once in a while to see how we're doing. Um, so I wanted to say to them, thank you very much for joining us, and their, your work has been invaluable to help us. And hopefully uh, the viewers as well, you've enjoyed their participation. Um, Alex's work on the computers and the editing and so on, and CC of course in front of the camera, as well as behind the scenes. Um, and then the last thing I want to say, um, when my uh, best friend was alive, uh, Derek, Derek, who was your uh, yeah. ex-employee back in Jamaica, back in. 
<coughs> he used to say when uh, during special times like these, uh, he would say a prayer, uh, um, a blessing if you will. It came from the uh, Irish um, heritage. So I'm going to say this to both of them um, because it means a lot to me. May God be with you and bless you. May you see your children's children. May you be poor in misfortune, rich in blessings. May you know nothing but happiness from this day forward. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the warm rays of sun fall upon your home. And may the land of a friend always be near. May green be the grass you walk on. May blue be the skies above you. May pure be the joys that surround you, and may true be the hearts that love you. May you be a blessing and joy to everyone around you, and may you find love and happiness all the days of your life. So anyway, with that, we're going to send you guys off, and uh, well, for the rest of the day anyway, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed <laughs> this video of ours. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh boy. And we'll see <laughs> all of you the next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. And now you know the rest of the story.